I V M. So it's been another great week on IVM, and we're hoping that you enjoy all of the podcasts that we're being able to get out to you. As always, if you're not following us, please do follow us on IVM Podcasts on all the social media platforms. This week on Keeping It Queer, Naveen spoke to Ankit Das Gupta, the social media content manager at Mirror Now. On Who's Your Mommy, Veda discusses mom bods and the toll a pregnancy can take on women. On Varta Lab, Akash and Naveen exchange stories with boys from the Bombay Hemp Company. On Pragati, Pawan and Hamsini are joined by Dr. Shambhavi Nayak to discuss the Nipah virus and discuss the nitty-gritties of this new disease. On Simplified, Naren and Chuck break down the differences between schizophrenia and split personality on a shorty. It's been a really, really great week and I hope that you're going to listen to all of these shows or at least some of them. In the meantime, let me get you on to this one. Hello and welcome to a Simplified Shorty. Today we are going to talk about split personalities and schizophrenia. And contrary to popular belief, this show is not actually one person talking in three voices. <laughs> so yeah, this is actually we are actually three different human beings. So Chuck, what do you think is the difference between uh, split personality and schizophrenia? Uh, well, Sidney Sheldon wrote a book about one of them. He did? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that tells you the quality of depth of my research. I mean, uh, no or the trash that I read. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. Actually, yeah, I don't so have So most answer. people would say it's the same thing. Yeah. Right? And it's not. So in the movie, uh, me, myself and Irene, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey plays a state trooper with two personalities, Hank and Charlie. He is told that a split personality is part of his diagnosis of schizophrenia with involuntary narcissist rage. Mm-hmm. And indeed, according to a Harris poll uh, conducted for the National Organization on Disability in the US, about two-thirds of people surveyed believed that split personality is a part of schizophrenia. That is the sure. popular belief. And it has been popularized by Hollywood as well. Mm-hmm. But medically speaking, split personality has nothing to do with schizophrenia. So in the 19th century, R.L. Stevenson uh, wrote about, you know, the guy who wrote Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, yeah. So he wrote this story based on the same guy who has Correct. two yeah, yeah. different personalities. Not to be confused with R.L. Stein, who wrote, a, <laughs> who wrote many other things, which was scary as well. So Jekyll and Hyde exist in the body of one person mm. and they come out at different times. They're very different yeah. personalities. The term split personality re-entered popular language in 1957 when C.H. Thickpen and H.M. Checkley wrote their famous book, The Three Faces of Eve. Okay, it was Three Faces of Eve. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, It was based on one of their patients. And the popular concept was that a person could oscillate between two or indeed more uh, very different personalities. Mm -hmm. That was the... Uh, conceit of that hmm. book and uh, the disorder was called multiple personality disorder oh, so it wasn't even like thing, a split yeah. personality but in the fourth edition of the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders which is the bible of psychiatry uh, it has been renamed as dissociative identity disorder so it's no hmm. longer called mu- multiple personality disorder it's called dissociative identity so where you sort of lose a sense of who you are okay and become someone else even so the diagnosis is somewhat controversial hmm. so if uh, two psychiatrists different psychiatrists are presented with a patient who exhibits exhibits these signs they will differ on their assessment of whether it's a multiple personality hmm. disorder so some psychiatrist as i was saying would say that it simply doesn't exist. It could be explained by a whole lot of other... And this is a function of the fact that the brain is infuriatingly complex and hard to... So everything affects everything else in right. the yeah. brain. There is one uh, uh, disorder uh, which I was reading about called the Capgras syndrome in which you know a particular part of the brain is injured. And so what, what happens is when I see you, you are my friend. Mm-hmm. So I visually recognize you as Chuck, but it also gives me a feeling of warmth or whatever. I know you're not a threat. Or, yeah, uh-huh. whatever. And those two feelings are necessary. Mm. And in the Capgras syndrome, because of that connection is broken, I see you, I recognize you as a as Chuck, 
but i those feelings don't come feelings are feel, not there hmm. so i start uh, identifying you as an imposter oh so those kind of things so brain is very funny that way oh there was some sad, there's a very bad movie based on this also like i think uh, where a woman forgets that she's married to this guy and the guy has to essentially woo her every single day oh yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. forget uh, that was some silly romantic comedy yeah yeah, yeah. but it was interesting uh, premise very interesting movies you watch though <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway so anyway that wasn't really connected to schizophrenia i was just sort of trying to illustrate mm. how uh, weirdly the brain brain is wired uh, and how infuriatingly complex mm. it can be so Uh, one of the first recorded cases of multiple personality disorder was that of Mary Reynolds which mm-hmm. was way back in 1817 okay and between 1817 and 1944 when a major review of uh, multiple personality disorder was uh, reported by uh, Dr Taylor and Dr Martin mm-hmm. only a total of 76 cases of MPD had been like multiple mm-hmm. personal uh, personality. Uh, personality disorder had been diagnosed mm. and indeed in 1984 thick pen and checkley who i referred to earlier uh, wrote that they now doubted the accuracy of a diagnosis of multiple personality disorder in other word split personality may not even exist as a medical condition wow coming to schizophrenia on the other hand that is tragically far more common okay it affects about 1% of the population mm-hmm. which is pretty high and it's a serious illness which manifests itself as major disturbances in a person's thoughts emotions behavior and perceptions sure uh, it usually first appears in adolescence or early adulthood uh, though it can appear later and it can happen at virtually any time in life uh, but it happens earlier in men and a little later in women that's that's the average but it can mm. uh, appear at and I think I read somewhere say it's usually after the onset of puberty that mm. it happens. So you unlikely to find very very young children schizophrenic because they are nuts anyway. So. <laughs> But it's it's a it's a pretty distressing. Uh, mm. I I have uh, one or two people close to me who are who suffer from and they manage. But uh, it is they have been through a lot mm-hmm. because. from the time you realize something's wrong to the time you go to a psychiatrist and to the time the psychiatrist successfully treats it and manages your condition that interim period It's is bad. very stressful hmm. for everybody who is close to you so basically you know there are two major groups of symptom mm-hmm. uh, one is positive active and negative passive and what i mean is this positive active uh, symptoms would be delusions so many schizophrenics believe that someone is speaking to them inside their head or thoughts are being placed inside the mind or that they are somebody oh else. like are, george bush famous god is i get instructions yeah, from god from god so that's a very common uh, this thing or that they are being followed that somebody is mm-hmm. you know, on that and they suffer from hallucinations sometimes mm. which uh, they see or smell things even smell or hear things which are simply not there and no one else can sure, hear yeah. them or you know the voices yeah, yeah. in the so head the and the brain kind of filling thing. in yeah things for you without the visual yeah and uh, there is also this phenomenon of disorganized thoughts so a schizophrenic person would just their speech would jump from topic to topic very mm. incoherently without you know you you won't be able to make a thread out of what they are talking and and the other other thing is disorganized behavior yeah. so uh, it'll be summer and they'll be wearing like four sweaters or a coat oh. or yeah things like that so or they'll just uh, you know talk very loudly or shout mm. or just exclaim something it's it's a uh, very disorganized behavior and uh, about 90% of schizophrenics report delusions or you know hallucinations and more than 50% report auditory hallucinations so they keep hearing things and uh, only about 15% report visual hallucinations so auditory hallucinations hearing things uh, hearing voices are a big part of being schizophrenic, schizophrenic. and uh, negative passive there also the there is also the negative passive phase uh, which include withdrawal because you'll find the schizophrenic 
not wanting to interact with anyone oh, at okay. all. Yeah. Loss of motivation, hmm. very restless and loss of feeling. So someone near and dear might have died or something like that and there's absolutely no reaction. Given. And uh, they might suddenly stop uh, speaking or speak very, very infrequently and speak vaguely or repetitively. Hmm. So not coherent. And flat presentation. So, you know, facial expressions don't change or body language is absolutely non-existent mm-hmm. or uh, spontaneous movements. So, we, we, we do a lot of, when we speak, we do a lot of uh, spontaneous movements, head nods, hands, yeah, yeah. gesticulate. And uh, uh, typical negative, passive uh, behavior, uh, schizophrenic, nothing would move oh, yeah. other than his lips. Yeah. Wow. So, the popular myth Coming back to the, you know, the question of whether... Uh, the different. Uh, different. The popular myth is that split personality is part of schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. And the actual thing is, it's not. And the reason that people believe it might have a reason is that schizophrenia comes from the Greek word, which means split mind. Oh, okay. And But the word does not mean split personality, but the fact that the person is split from reality oh like so that. that's like how it physical goes split and not the yeah. sort of bifurcated split yeah and the word schizophrenia is still used incorrectly in uh, hollywood movies and uh-huh. you know hollywood has always got it wrong and they keep saying things like sp- spiritual schizophrenia or a schizophrenia of a secret agent hmm. those things are not uh, schizophrenia at all and there are enough myths about schizophrenia in their own right and uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I just go through a, a sort of list yeah. of them. Uh, one myth is that schizophrenia is caused by bad parenting and a lack of moral fiber. So that's, we don't understand what uh, schizoph- what really causes schizophrenia, but it's 100% sure that bad parenting or lack of moral fiber is not the cause for it. It happens to anybody and it's, pretty evenly spread out through populations all over the world. And uh, there are a few environmental and biological triggers. So they're mm-hmm. just hypotheses, but no one knows quite what they are. And so it's not repetitive. And it's because the human brain is so complex and so uh, sort of difficult to replicate that you keep getting false uh, sort of signs all over the place. Mm-hmm. Right? The research is still out. And uh, whatever the causes might be, it's definitely not bad parenting. And uh, the second myth is that people with schizophrenia are unstable and violent and may go wild without any warning. That's also a really big myth. The vast majority of schizophrenics are not a threat to others. Just like the vast major- majority of people, people are not. Are not yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very person dependent and uh, it has nothing to do with schizophrenia at all. And uh, so for the third myth is that you can never recover from schizophrenia. And that's a big myth uh, too because uh, many cases are treatable and there have been a lot of uh, advances in medical science. And hope for recovery is a big part of the treatment. And like many medical cases, they may or may not be a cure but it definitely can be managed. Treated, managed People like diabetes. Can, yeah, in some like sense. diabetes or hypertension. Mm. You can continue to lead a normal yeah. life. Or being a simplified subscriber. Or you can't, you can't, subscriber. can't cure it, but you can treat it. <laughs> and uh, so one other, the last myth on my list is that they are, uh, schizophrenics have an intellectual disability. So... Intellectual disability and schizophrenia like are two different listen. things. No, sorry. No. <laughs> no, but they are two different things. And uh, schizophrenics do have problem uh, with certain kinds of thinking, like abstract thinking or concentration. Mm-hmm. They could have problems, but once they're treated, not they necessarily so. And it's definitely nothing to do with their intelligence. So if a person is schizophrenic, it does not follow that he or she is deficient at uh, thinking in any way at all. Mm. So that was pretty much it about so TLDR. TLDR is schizophrenia and split personality are different. Mm-hmm. And schizophrenia is a fairly common psychi- like psychological ailment, mental ailment. And it can be treated, managed. And we hope you have 
luck with any of your near and dear ones who might be exhibiting symptoms of schizophrenia we urge you to uh Seek get them advice. to yeah get them to uh, consult a good psychiatrist and hope they have a good normal life and uh, yeah or you could just make mm. them a simplified subscriber that also yeah. that's been known to help yeah it'll definitely help stay tuned and see you next week yeah bye bye He bends down to test the warm water for his bath. He comes here to quench his thirst for a hot shower and some podcasts. You can witness how he enjoys having other people talk about cool stuff in his bathroom. Indeed, it helps him with his loneliness. You can find more of his pieces on ivmpodcast.com, your one-stop destination where you can check out the coolest Indian podcasts. Happy listening.